8.55 Eastern Time. And Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. The British have officially asked the United States government for financial assistance, according to reports in Washington today, which high officials of the administration would not deny. The details are not known, but it is believed the British have not asked for a loan, but merely for some guarantee that they can go on buying American war materials when their own available resources are used up. Representative Saul Bloom, chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, has proposed to introduce reg- legislation to repeal the present bans on such action. And even the isolationist Senator Taft said that he would support such action when the time comes. And that he thought, as Governor Landon suggested the other day, that an outright gift would be better than loans. Mrs. Roosevelt also said today at her press conference that it was about time we started to give something and that to call it a loan would be unrealistic. Meanwhile, Defense Commissioner Knudsen wrote to all members of the machine tool industry urging faster deliveries because of what he called the terrible urgency of the situation. And he asked manufacturers to remind their workers that every hour or minute saved by greater efficiency will help the country arm that much faster. The president returned from Warm Springs this afternoon and went into conference with Secretary of State Hull, Under Secretary Wells, and Norman Davis, tra- chairman of the Red Cross. But there is still no indication whether or not he will address the country on defense problems and the war situation. Overseas, the British are still pressing back the Italians on Libyan territory. Saloum, the last town in Egypt, and Fort Capuzzo, just across the frontier, were taken today, while Bardia, the Libyan port, which is presumably the next British objective, was heavily bombed. The British claim that in Saturday night's air raid on Naples, they made five hits on cruisers and destroyers. The Italians have admitted one cruiser damaged and a small vessel sunk. In Albania, reports from the Yugoslav frontier that the Greeks have taken Kimara and Tepelani are not borne out by the Greek communique, which mentions only local operations successfully executed on various parts of the front. Blizzards in the mountains have caused the armies plenty of inconvenience, but have not stopped the fighting. The Greeks have apparently made some advances in the north, but one Italian post on a mountaintop near Lake Ocrida is still holding out and seems to be giving them plenty of trouble. Heavy fog over the English Channel appears to have hampered the German Air Force tonight, for while a few planes have been over England, there are no heavy raids reported from anywhere. It is now announced that Sheffield was the town that got the worst of it last night, but the attack was nothing like so formidable as the big one last week. Berlin was raided twice last night. The Germans at first claimed that the British dropped only leaflets, but eventually admitted damage to a railroad, a subway, and also to some apartment houses and hospitals. Kiel, Bremen, and Frankfurt were also attacked by the British. From a western British port, it is announced tonight that all on board the torpedoed liner Western Prince have been landed safely. This was the ship that carried the Canadian Minister of Munitions and his staff. Otto Abetz, German ambassador to France, arrived in Vichy this evening accompanied by a number of technical experts and by an armed guard of German soldiers. Presumably, he is to find out just what the dismissal of Laval and appointment of Flandin is all about, and to report to Hitler, which suggests that Hitler may not be entirely satisfied with Marshal Pétain's explanation. Government spokesmen in Berlin today pointed out that Germany and France are not yet at peace, but that their relations are regulated by an armistice whose terms might have to be re-examined. This led to speculation in Switzerland that the Germans might now intend to occupy all of France. In Berlin, this was called the sheerest nonsense, but the Berlin spokesman this morning certainly did convey the impression that Germany was not too well pleased with the change in the French government and that something might have to be done about it. In London, it is announced tonight that Scotland Yard has discovered an extensive communist plot to stir up labor disputes in British factories and to spread defeatism and discontent in London air raid shelters. Only last night, Ernest Bevan, the British Minister of Labor, who had been heckled by communists when speaking at Glasgow, warned Russia against interference in British internal affairs. It is believed in London that one main purpose of this communist agitation is to try to soften up British public opinion for the new peace offensive, which is expected from Hitler sometime this winter. In the Far East, the border skirmishing between French Indochina and Thailand still goes on. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.